Okay, and now we're going to talk about return on invested capital. Uh, the formula for return on invested capital is NOPAT divided by invested capital. And return on invested capital is often abbreviated as ROIC, as you see it here. Now, calculating uh, return on invested capital is a little bit more involved than our other profitability ratios, but I think you're going to see that it's well worth the extra effort. So we're, we're going to take it in pieces and uh, we'll see how it's done. Now, uh, return on equity, return on assets, and return on sales were all effectively the same formula uh, with a different uh, denominator. So it was all, all of them took net income and divided then respectively by equity assets or revenue. Where return on invested capital, we changed the numerator also. We changed the numerator from net income to net operating profit after tax. And NOPAT, uh, shows what a company would have earned if it had no debt and therefore didn't have any interest expense, but it still needed to pay taxes. And the, uh, the denominator is uh, also just one step uh, more involved uh, because it involves uh, a little bit of a calculation as well. Um, it's not just, uh, it's asking us not just to consider the equity being invested into a company, but to add to it um, also the interest bearing debt. So we'll see how to do that in a moment. So to calculate return on invested capital, there are three steps. Step one, you calculate the numerator, that's no pat. And step two, we calculate invested capital for our denominator. And then three, we divide the result that we got in step one by the result in step two and uh, we'll derive uh, return on invested capital. So step one, uh, we need to find income before tax. Uh, this is often uh, identified on the income statement as it is here. Uh, if for Hasbro, uh, this is the Hasbro income statement for 2018. Um, you see it says earnings before income taxes. Sometimes it could be labeled as income before tax or profit before tax, um, but uh, we can see it's labeled clearly for us as income before tax at 270. But what if you're looking at an income statement and that calculation isn't given? Then you would simply just take EBIT or earnings before interest and tax and subtract interest expense. The only item you want to exclude is tax. And I think you'll find that most statements of public companies, earnings before tax is given. Um, and this is the amount, this is the dollar amount that they're taxed on. So then the next step is to establish the tax rate. And uh, we know that the amount of profit they're taxed on uh, is earnings before tax. And if we know the income taxes that they uh, expensed here at uh, almost $50 million, then it's a really a very straightforward calculation to divide tax expense by income before tax to establish the tax rate. In Hasbro's case here, the earnings before income tax is $270 million and they paid nearly $50 million in income taxes. So dividing one by the other would give us Hasbro's effective tax rate at 18.5%. And our third step uh, now is to put these two pieces together uh, to calculate NOPAT. So uh, net operating profit after tax, is, the formula for this is operating income multiplied by one minus the tax rate. The operating profit is $331 million uh, times one minus 18.5% uh, would yield uh, $269 million uh, for Hasbro. Uh, this is what Hasbro would have earned if it had no debt and uh, therefore didn't have any interest expense, but still had to pay taxes. So this, uh, this result, $269 million, that is no pat and that's the numerator that we're looking for. So now we'll move on to uh, finding the denominator. To find the denominator, we need to find interest-bearing debt. Uh, so we look at Hasbro's balance sheet here, and we look for items that are interest-bearing debt. And we can see in current liabilities, they have short-term borrowings, and in uh, long-term liabilities, they have long-term debt. Now, clearly these both carry interest. Um, the other things that we see on the liability section of Hasbro's balance sheet, accounts payable, accrued liabilities, other liabilities, these are generally not interest bearing, but to be sure, we would wanna check the notes of the financial statements to see what's in each of these buckets and make sure that they're not interest bearing, especially in other liabilities. So we add the two interest bearing debts uh, together, the short-term borrowing and the long-term debt, and we get $1.704 billion in interest bearing debt. 
Now we add interest bearing debt to total equity and to arrive at invested capital. Interest bearing debt, uh, we just calculated at 1.7 billion. We can see straight on the balance sheet, uh, 1.7 billion also in total shareholders equity. These added together would get us total invested capital of $3.459 billion of invested capital. So now we have both of our, uh, uh, the both pieces that we need for ROIC. We have no PAT, that was the answer we got from step one, and we have invested capital, that's the answer we got from step two. We divide no PAT by invested capital, and we arrive at a re return on invested capital for Hasbro of 7.8%. Now, how do we evaluate that 7.8%? How do we check if it's good or bad? Well, one thing we would do is we compare return on invested capital for Hasbro to other companies in its industry. We can look at Lego, Spin Master, and Mattel as other large toy companies, and we would see that Spin Master's return on invested capital is significantly lower uh, than two of its peers, but at least it's still in positive territory while Mattel has a negative return on capital. In terms of how has this been trending over time, you can see that Hasbro's return on invested capital has been getting worse each year. In 2016, it was almost 26%, which was quite respectable uh, in this industry, but it's been deteriorating quite significantly since then. We like to see higher returns on invested capital than lower, and needless to say, they should be positive. We'll have more on evaluating return on invested capital in a subsequent